Hey there, Micah Dion here for another tip of the week. Um, this week I'm going to be talking about kind of pain science and the history of pain. So there's been a few models that have been um, kind of developed even starting from the 1600s. So that one actually started with a Cartesian uh, model of pain and that's more of a simple pain, uh, pain stimulus. It's a linear transmission and then it's just process. So it's very, very simple and straightforward. Um, kind of the next theory off of that was in 1965 and that's more of the gate control uh, theory where it's non-painful uh, sensations can override and reduce painful sensations. So say you whack your knee or shin on the table or even your toe, God forbid, I did that ye yesterday. Actually rub the area around it and it can actually decrease the amount of pain. So it's just a development on the pain. So it's just looking at the nerve fibers, a sensation travels on one fiber, a uh, big pain stimulus travels on another, sensation is um, processed in the brain faster so it can reduce that amount of uh, pain that's actually seen or experienced by the individual. The next one it was actually created in 1980 and that's kind of Lozier's onion model. So that's kind of how you perceive pain more bringing in psychology of pain. So it's the pain stimulus itself or nociception then the pain, the amount of suffering with that pain, and then a pain behavior. So your past experiences can be involved in that. So that's bringing even more into the psychology. Maybe not, hey, you burnt your hand, and then we have a, a pain stimulus with that. So if you burn your hand again, you might have a different perception of that pain. So it's kind of building on those models. The next model is more of a sample scrutinized respond. So it's a mature organism model uh, from Gidford or Gifford, sorry, and that was in uh, 1998. So you can see big uh, gap between the first model and the next, and every decade or so, there's gonna be a new model that comes in with more psychology that's brought into that uh, kind of uh, complexity of pain science itself. So this one is more, uh, again, bringing in the psychology of it, and I'm gonna go into more detail in these uh, last two because they're the most recent. Um, so the next one was actually in 2001, and that's uh, Malzik's update on his model, so more of a neural matrix. So how the, uh, the, uh, the neuropsychology uh, of things, the neurobiology, and the chemistry within the body, how that's processed. So it's even, even deeper and even deeper into that. Um, so the last one that's kind of, uh, kind of presented now is more of a biopsychosocial model. So bring in all the uh, biology of the individual and how they're made up, um, the, um, the psychology of it, and even the social aspects of life. So we can kind of look at like, um, if you think of three circles, and the middle being the pain, so we got the bio, the psycho, and the social aspect. All of these are gonna kinda uh, influence how we perceive pain, how we experience pain, um, and breaking down even acute pain uh, and chronic pain, because those are much different. So um, I always like thinking of, uh, with chronic pain, the amount of pain that you're in is not equal to the tissue damage. Acute pain, okay, we need to look at that a little bit more, listen to it, and uh, I always use pain as the body's um, way of communicating with us, letting us know that it's too much, too little, and use these models uh, to influence how we're gonna actually work through uh, pain and alleviating that pain. So in the next videos, I'll be getting into the last two models I talked about in more detail. Thanks.